It's a sad situation really for people buying Samsung phones but they live outside the few countries who get the Snapdragon chip because I've found yet another downside. In this Exynos version, support for app text is limited. And to be specific, the latency in PUBG is more than twice when compared to my Redmi K20 Pro. We're gonna check all the latency tests today, so let's get into it. Selamat pagi! Good morning everyone, Kenneth here. And today, as promised in my previous video, we're going to talk about aptx codec and how its latency gets significantly worse on chipsets that are not named snapdragon now if you know starting from snapdragon 845 or above we have this aptx tws mode where both earbuds are connected to the phone at the same time so you can use only one or both sides you can switch between left and right without any interruption and most importantly the latency could be as good as a gaming mode enabled earbuds. But this Aptex TWS support isn't everywhere. Not every chip is a Snapdragon chip. There are Huawei's, Samsung's, MediaTek's. Sometimes these chips support aptX or even a Snapdragon chip itself can drop the support like the Snapdragon 625 on my very entry-level Redmi 5 Plus. But specifically talking about Exynos 990 in its phone, as expensive as a Note 20 Ultra, I was surprised that it feels just like my iPhone. Only one earbud connect at a time, switching between earbuds takes a few seconds and the latency is actually more than double. And that's the main discussion for today. We're going to see and compare how really the latency is different between the Exynos Note 20 Ultra and the Snapdragon 855 Redmi K20 Pro. On the earbud side, I'm gonna be testing the Transmart Apollo Bolt, which uses QCC5124, a flagship tier chip with ANC from Qualcomm, with the only downside that I just discovered as well, it is the only one that doesn't support Aptex Adaptive in the lineup. So for now, I'll be testing standard aptX, and I'll also throw in some Halo G21XR results to see if there is any difference between this flagship chip into the QCC, 3020 entry level chip. Now, before we check the latency tests, a quick reminder for you guys wondering how I do these latency tests, I'll link to the explanation video up here. And if you found this video helpful, don't forget to hit the thumbs up, subscribe. And if you want to support the channel, I've got affiliate links to different online stores in the description. You can use it to buy anything really, and I'll get a commission at no extra cost to you. Thank you so much for your support, and let's check out how Transmart Apollo Bowl performs on Note 20 Ultra with standard aptX. And now I ask you, how much latency is too much? For me, a number about 500 millisecond is very uncomfortable for games, that is. A basic 20 buck earbud usually gets around 300 millisecond easily. But here we have 600, close to 700 delay on aptX. The last time I saw that kind of performance was when I tested Buds Q, Realme Buds Q on my super cheap Redmi 5 Plus phone, which I thought was the effect of Bluetooth 4.2 or the weak Snapdragon 625 chip inside. But what is this? The lag is so noticeable. I decided to grab my brother's Redmi K20 Pro right away and test the same earbud again and the result is just what I expected it to be. Now there you go much much better at 300 milliseconds it's actually a relief to me to find that out just for your info in my app text versus gaming mode video 
check it out up here. I've seen the numbers to drop a bit lower to the 250 millisecond range, which is the territory of gaming mode earbuds, and that's good enough for gaming for me. Paired with the fact that both are connected to the phone, can switch between left and right earbuds effortlessly, it makes using the true wireless earbuds on aptx TWS a better experience. But now I realize that the Note 20 Ultra can't do the same thing. I'm pretty disappointed. Anyway, for the final touch, we're going to see the Halo GT1 XR in action and see if the performance is any different to the QCC flagship chips. Let's check it out. All right, so if you compare this to the last test, I doubt that you'll feel any difference. The Halo GT1 XR is just a frame or two behind, about 16 to 32 millisecond. I think it's within the margin of error there. And I can say that these two perform at basically the same level, which is good because you don't have to spend a ton to get a good low latency through wireless earbuds, as we've seen time and time again in my channel. Now I'm sure Aptex Adaptive will take things to a whole new level but we have to leave that for another video because I just don't have any Aptex adaptive earbuds at the moment. It could be really great or it could only shave just a couple milliseconds off and end up performing similar to the AirDots S. I really hope it's the former though. So I'll be waiting until I get my first Aptex adaptive earbuds but make sure to subscribe to know when it comes. So as a conclusion to the video, we know that Aptek support is not exclusive to only Snapdragon chips. But as you have seen, even among the best chips out there, the Exynos 990 inside this Note 20 Ultra, a very premium phone, can only support the standard aptX codec, not aptX TWS or even aptX adaptive. I think it's safe to say that this will be the case with other chips as well, right? I think the problem has always been compatibility. Sometimes it might be stated clearly, but some other times, I don't think we can know which phone supports Aptex TWS and which phone doesn't, right? As for the case with Note 20 Ultra, I think it's a shame really because it's one more downside that you have to swallow, that you have to accept if you're living in the Exynos region. First, you don't have as much performance or battery life and now no aptex tws ouch but i have to say this clear samsung as one of the biggest phone manufacturer in the world tried to reduce the pain somewhat by offering its own proprietary scalable codec samsung scalable is very similar to aptex adaptive because it adapts the streaming bit rates according to the environment so you'll always have a stable connection and also you can activate gaming mode when you need to lower the latency and i've tested its gaming mode in this video right here which you can check it out honestly speaking it's a good codec. The thing is, it's only used in their Galaxy Buds lineup, and I don't see them opening it up to other manufacturers. Yes, it does give the Galaxy Buds an advantage over other earbuds, you know, like the higher possibly sound quality or the lower latency or the stability. It's a good thing. Like seriously, there's even an Apple style handoff where the Galaxy Buds will switch seamlessly when you start using another Samsung product. But the problem is, it's not an all or nothing situation like the iPhones that just flat out don't support Aptex, but it's a if you live in a Snapdragon region, then you're lucky situation. I do remember the years where Samsung phones with Exynos chips are actually faster. Those were the glory days, but back then performance was an issue. Now, not so much. Phone has gotten fast enough that the focus has shifted to the experience around it. And especially when headphone jacks are completely gone now, supporting as much codecs for wireless earbuds is a big deal, at least to me. And seeing this much difference between the Exynos and the Snapdragon version, I am not happy for it.
And of course, I would love to be wrong. If Samsung can push an update so the Exynos chips will get better AppTech support or even AppTech adaptive, that would be really great. But as of right now, this is one more reason why Exynos is inferior to Snapdragon and why you should be mindful if you're buying AppTech earbuds from now on because your phone may or may not support this AppTech TWS mode. So that's pretty much it for the video. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know what do you think about the situation. It may seem like I'm blaming Samsung for everything, but I believe it's not entirely their fault. They try their best. They made Samsung scalable, but Qualcomm is just really good at making good chips. They acquired Aptex from CSR and it seems like to be a good deal because nowadays it seems like Aptex is the only higher quality codec for Bluetooth that gained more adoption rate when compared to LDHC or LDAC and maybe they're making it difficult for other chip makers to put Aptex adaptive into their phones as well so that you know phone makers actually use their Snapdragon chip. Maybe the licensing fee is high and Samsung didn't put it in because the market is too small. I don't know but if you happen to know a thing or two I'll be waiting to learn more from you. I hope we can have a good, healthy conversation in the comment section down below. And as always, you can follow my Instagram and Twitter to know more on what video I'm working on, you know, stuff like that. Because yeah, I'll be getting back to True Wireless Earbuds reviews really soon. So that wraps it up for the video today. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Kenneth and I will see you in the next one. Bye.